much for inviting me, and thank you for the kind words. Um, I, be, I chose to talk on the Indus River dolphin because this is a very special species. And this is a species that belongs to Pakistan and nowhere else in the world. So you know, the true ownership of this species is with us. So I thought, why not talk about this species with our young leaders? Because one day, you will be leading the conservation and I'll be retired somewhere. Or, so you know, that's when we need to inspire people so that you can uh, have that role for future. So it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, I will begin um, talking by first introducing you to the river dolphin species that are found globally. So I have a little video, it's actually very little, just two minutes, to tell you what we have uh, in terms of river dolphins globally. So because in the world there are only six species. So it's good to know those six unique species. No, no, no. Sorry, not this one.
six species, as I said, and two are in South America, and four are in um, Asia. All are either endangered or critically endangered. Or endangered or critically endangered ka matlab ye hota hai ke agar hum iski protection ke liye kaam na kare, to species extinct ho jayegi. So in in uh, very layman terms, this is what it means. And these species are very unique. Um, aapko thoda sa shed video se andaza hua ho. Unique in the sense, for example, jo Pakistan ki indus dolphin hai, wo blind hai. Or this is not uh, a challenge for the dolphin. You know, jaysay hum sochein ho blind hai, to shayad uske liye koi challenge hai. That's not the case. They are blind, but they can move, they can navigate, they can find their way because of echolocation. Wo sounds produce karti hai, and sounds touch different objects and they bounce back and apne dolphin mein dekha hoga uska jo forehead hai it's like bulging so wo sounds jo hai wo produce hoti hai and they are received in this part and also in the lower jaw aur phir unko sab kuch pata chal raha hota hai ke ye aapke irg jo objects hain are they hard are they soft are they big are they small so they are extremely unique in that way. Um, in subjo species and the six species that video covered, they are all, as I said, critically endangered or endangered. So their conservation is a huge challenge. And why we say it is a challenge? Because our population is growing. And they all live in rivers. They all live in fresh waters. And you know what we need to live in our lives? Fresh water. Fresh water. What we need to do in our agriculture? Fresh water. So, you know, dolphin needs and human needs are clashing with each other so much. And the suffering ones are the river dolphins so far. So I'll just uh, show you a little bit of what we do. Um, and how we are bringing innovation to the world. So just again a quick snapshot. You saw in the video all these six species, but we must not forget that there used to be a seventh species also, which was called Yangtze River Dolphin, or wo China ka jo bhot bada dirya hai Yangtze, usme pai jati. Lekin wo is dunya se ab khatam ho chuki hai. So we already have an example of a river dolphin species which has gone extinct, and these four are declining. And you see, the pop I especially put the population number on top so that you know that some of these species are very, very small in their numbers. Um, and they are constantly, some are recovering, but most of them are declining. And Tukushi, which is right in the corner in South America, Uska to hume number in pata ke kitni hai. But they keep dying and we don't know because they are, they are widespread. Uh, Pakistan mein to Indus ek lamba sa dirya hai with some tributaries. But in the Amazon, everyone talks about Amazon River Basin and Orinoco River Basin because they are huge and they have huge tributaries. So if we don't know the numbers. But ab jo Asia mein hai, usme ab Okay, um, is there a pointer somewhere? So Asia mein hai ye uh, Ganges, which is top corner, this population is maximum 5,000. Or ye hai India, Bangladesh, Nepal mein. Phir uske niche hai Irrawaddy dolphin, jo ke Indonesia ke darya mein hai, uh, Cambodia, and uh, then it's in Myanmar. Um, then we have Indus, which is in Pakistan, with only five individuals in Bias River in India. So 99.99 population is in Pakistan. That's why I said in the beginning, we are the owners, custodians, safe guardians. You know, so Indus is largely in Pakistan. Takushi, we don't know. Yangtze, Finless Porpoise, ke, uh, China, mein sirf 1200 animals. Rege. There's a little increase in the population, 
few years ago, the survey said 1,012. Now they are 1,245. So there's a little increase, and China is doing extremely extensive work. China may be a fishing meter sector, they have very strong law enforcement, and they have the resources to do it also. Because what they did was that all the fishermen that were fishing in the Yangtze, they gave them uh, alternative livelihood, made huge investments, uh, moved them elsewhere. So they made a lot of investment to save Yangtze fenless porpoise. And they did all this because they were under a lot of pressure from the international community. And you have to take some radical steps to ensure. So China is doing a lot of work for Yangtze Fenless Porpoise now. Um, some of these species are endemic. Endemic means that they are So that is the porpoise. Indus, as I said, only in the Indus, it's endemic to the Indus river system. So even if we have five who consider Kalni, even then it's endemic to the Indus River system. Very special animal. And going back to when I said it's blind, they actually don't even need eyes. Other, if you have any one of you has been to the Indus, I'm sure um, Altaf Salim has been, um, the, the water is full of mud. It's full of silt. That's how the river is naturally. So once I put, I just took a glass of water from the Indus and I just put it for like 30 seconds. There was a layer of mud at the bottom of the glass and the water above was crystal clear. So they naturally, they have a silt in the water. So even if they have eyes, they don't need eyes. And it was gradual evolutionary process that their eyes stopped working and their echolocation developed even further. So this is the map that depicts where river dolphins are found. Uh, there are eight countries in Asia and seven countries in South America. Um, as I said in the beginning, that we are also utilizing water for agriculture, for our industry, for drinking, for all those purposes. And dolphins also need water. And if you look at the population stats, so, you know, maybe next time you're doing a project, just look at how the population is growing in all these countries. And these are all those countries where dolphins are found, and they have extremely high and growing population and growing economies, which means that they want to put more and more industry, they want to grow, they want to use water, they want to develop more areas for cultivation so they can feed that population, which is also growing. So that means that they need water, which is the basic necessity. And that is, as I said before, is the conflict between one of the conflicts, between dolphins and people. So dams, uh, it was mentioned in the video, which uh, are water storage for electricity production. Um, and they are fragmenting. They are cutting the rivers. Dolphins can't pass through dams. Um, they can pass through barrages. I'll show you a picture of a barrage, which we have on the Indus River. But they are largely, the gates are shut almost fully to divert the water into canals so you can irrigate your land. Um, then what are these dams doing is that all these red dots are dams and they are operational dams. On, and you see the rivers, um, I don't have a pointer, but you have uh, this infrastructure, and which means that the, the rea has been cut. Um, and this is one of the main reasons why the Indus dolphin population declined. It crashed, and the range also crashed. And I'll show you a little clip on this. tributaries come up. 1970, 
and the, all the blue lines means that this is uh, the range of the English dolphin. So, at our time, the uh, Indus dolphin ki gazetted uh, distribution jo hai wo ye hai. So, aap imagine kare, just imagine you go to Ravi and see Indus dolphins. That's what it was like. And then we move on and you see the black dots emerging on the blue lines. These are our water infrastructure, the Rajas, jo banne shuru hai taake paani ko canals me uh, divert kiya ja sake. So they started to emerge and now you see the blue lines, that's where the Indus dolphin remains. So this is now, the situation now, it hasn't changed. Um, so there is a lot of discussion on should we take dolphins from the Indus and move them to the other rivers. But then there is also a counter argument yeah, amongst the scientists that if we take them, will they survive? What is the situation? If they've gone extinct from those rivers, it means that there is a problem with those rivers. And there's pollution, and you know, there's lots of things going on, and there's fishing. Um, so is we, um, this argument also has a counter argument, but it's still under consideration that we may be transporting some dolphins to the other rivers. So this um, is a little map that shows up uh, play there's a little play button. Achha, this is created by a GIS lab. We have a very sophisticated lab. All the red lines show that this is where dolphins were and then you see the, uh, the, uh, the year are coming up with the name of the infrastructure or or gradually you, s you will see that these red lines will disappear, which means that the dolphins are disappearing. And now we have 2,000 dolphins left only in this small uh, river stretch. It's only 1,300 kilometers river stretch and it's, they are all together. Uh, and this is another huge concern for us that okay, if they are all together in a little river stretch, then it's a huge challenge for, for us to ensure their long-term survival. If the range is bigger, um, can, you, can you please move on to the next? Okay, so now that's where the dolphins are found. Um, they are largest population is between Sin, um, Gudu or Sakhar Viraj to Danyami. It's uh, only, only 190 kilometers river stretch, which is a very small stretch, or usme kui 1400 dolphins rehti hai. So they are, you know, and the density is very high. Um, so it's a huge challenge because you look at them, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. This is exactly what's happening to the industry of the dolphins. The other threat is that a lot of dolphins die in the fishing nets. 50% uh, of the mortality uh, of Indus dolphin um, in Pakistan is because of entanglements in the nets. Um, why this is important? Fish, uh, to fish uh, is, is, can breathe underwater, right? Uh, but dolphins are mammals. So they have to use, they have a nose on top of their head. So they have to breathe outside the water. That's why the video of me up and they can up out here. So if it gets entangled in a fishing net, then they cannot breathe. So they are simply drowned and it happens very quickly. I've seen it happening. It's like very quick. They just, and they try to, they struggle to let go of the net, to come out of the net, but the more they struggle, the more the net uh, rolls around them, um, and then they just die very quickly. It's extremely sad, and I told you that they can echolocate, I mean, they produce sounds and they can detect nets, but um, unfortunately, there are illegal nets. 
that are so thin. Um, people are using mosquito nets to catch fish because they want to catch more and more and more. Because unfortunately, Pakistan is other the fishermen are paid um, by weight. So, if you have a lot of people, contract system. So, um, the more they catch, and they want to use all sorts of practices, the river is so huge that, let's say, the fisheries department or our guards through WWF, we cannot really monitor the entire river. Or, this kind of practices or dolphins might be. So, we asked uh, fishermen. कि हमें बिल्कुल honestly बताएं हम report नहीं करेंगे आप कितनी मरती हैं एक जब आप लोग एक group से कर रहे तो कुछ fishermen I think those were really honest they even said up to twelve in one fishing season so अब सोचिए एक group अकेठा पांच छह fishermen का अगर fish कर रहे and they lose like twelve dolphins in each fishing season this is huge and this is not uh, something which is unique to Indostalfin, it happens everywhere. It happens in all the other countries. So, which means that we need better protection and we need to work with fishermen to find solutions. Um, and I will be talking about one of the solutions as our innovation. So, this brings me to uh, probably the last 10 minutes to talk about what are we doing exactly. Um, so there is a rescue program which is led by Sin Wildlife Department and as I said that we have barrages that literally shut down and there is water level in the river so canals we divert A lot of dolphins accidentally swim into those canals also and they cannot come back, they are stranded. So you, this happens every year with us say 15 dolphins, last year 25 dolphins were stranded in irrigation canals and they had to be picked up um, and translocated back in the main river. But largely it's a very successful program and so far about 200 dolphins have been rescued um, as part of this effort. Uh, which 200 may not sound like a big number to you, but if we look at that a species ki population is 2,000, then 200 is a very big number. This is a rescue ambulance hai because their world is the world of sound. Because they can't see and their hearing and echolocation is extremely sensitive. So, we have soundproof it. Uh, they can hear sounds that even we can't hear. So you have to make it um, really, really good, sophisticated. So they can stay out of the water as long as you take protection, you cover them with wet towel and you pour some water on them. So you can, we, we have been doing it. Um, and sometimes animals die. And uh, then we measure them and we take samples and uh, we have done a lot of um, tissue sample analysis to understand ke are there toxins in uh, their tissue. So, or their uh, pesticides, jo fasno pe spray hote, chemicals, are they accumulating in their tissue? Because um, the animal ki, uh, reproductive capacity is compromised. So, that's why uh, it's it's good to closely monitor it. We have an education center, and then there is a very big a sustainable agriculture program, which basically works with, the, uh, with uh, farmers to tell them that uh, when do you need to actually water your crop. Because and sometimes they would spray chemicals even when they are not needed. Or usse jisko hum farmers ko jab sikhare hote hain, to hum unko kehte hain dost kiri, which means that they are basically uh, predatory in nature. Or wo baki insects ko khate hain, to hum unko we have taught them how to identify the dost kira 
so that you can you don't kill them. Actually, you need to save those kira because they are predators. Hain. Uh, ki okay. So you know that sort. This is what the uh, the sustainable agriculture program is all about, and um, it has covered massive um, uh, area. And um, last number I remember was eighty thousand farmers are enrolled in this program, and they are following um, sustainable agriculture practices. So fishermen, um, Johan, we also want to diversify their livelihood so that they are not entirely dependent on fishing. Or is me hamme kafi sari chizen ki hai. But I think it's important for you to understand that why do we need to do this? Um, fishing season, Johan, just me fishing ki ijazat hoti hai is approximately six months. But if they have uh, six months in a year. And if they don't have any other source of income, then what they do is that they use illegal nets, um, illegal um, methods like um, generators, batteries, batteries with live wire in the water to kill fish. Or because fishing allows when the water level is low, hota hai, which we call dry season, or when the community gets a little water. So chote pani mein fishing is allowed. When you have like flowing river, it's unsafe, it's the breeding season of fish, that's not when fishing is allowed. But, and it's so hard to fish in that um, massive flowing river, and that's when they use these easier practices like um, generators and batteries and all that. So if you have alternative livelihood, if, you, if they have other sources of income, then they won't go for uh, illegal practices. So this is a whole program which is focusing on livelihood approaches. So uh, that's the last bit on innovation. Um, this font is, sorry, it's all messed up on your, uh, these are WWF special fonts and they don't always work on other computers. Um, so we are using lots of uh, different technology and fingers is something that I'll briefly touch upon, um, and also satellite tagging. Uh, so I'll show you. Fingers uh, is ye Indonesia ki picture here because we are doing this work simultaneously in a few countries. Ye jo iske net ke saath ek lakak re pile rang ka, isko kehte finger. Or it's a very interesting, innovative thing. Is me, jaise maine aapko kaha ki dolphins wo aavaz sun sakti hain jo hum nahi sun sakte. Par jab finger on hota hai, aapko koi aavaz sunai nahi degi. Lekin dolphin ko sunai degi. And this is very high pitched yell wo aavaz. Um, ye net ke saath attach ho jaate. And when fishermen are fishing, dolphins don't come close to their nets. And we have tested it in very many countries, including Pakistan. And in Pakistan, there are trials happening because every species is unique. So in Indonesia, mein we saw that a Ravadi dolphin um, net se koi 10 meters, 20 meters far away. And the fishermen fish were the fish catches were improved. Hue. So then we did uh, this in Pakistan and we thought, oh, it worked on a Ravadi dolphin. Uh, let's try it in Pakistan. So we tried it and we are still trying it in three villages, uh, working with fishermen, and we have noticed similar trends. Uh, the catches are improving, dolphins are staying 30 meters away because our frequencies are slightly louder, or uh, it's saving the dolphins. So in those villages, we have not witnessed any mortality in a fishing gear so far, which is a very good sign, and we want to uh, build the coexistence. We can't tell fishermen, you leave the river, it belongs to the dolphins. Uh, we cannot do that. So, you know, it's all about uh, conservation of species, it's all about building that coexistence, resolving the problems. So, it's extremely challenging, but we are always trying to do that and bringing in new things. So, we have been rescuing dolphins, for example, from canals for 20 years and can we continue to rescue them from canals? We have to come up with solutions. Can we stop dolphins from going 
in two canals in the first place. So we also tested these fingers, very loud ones because pani ki awaz itni loud hoti hai that you really need to um, push the dolphins away. So we used really loud ones and that year there was not a single dolphin that went into the irrigation canals. So it was a very positive news for us that yes, it can work. Um, so it's, it's making fishermen also very happy because their catches, they are interested in fish. So their fish catches are improving and I put some number, not a huge change, but there was a change also in um, the quality of fish. The Raisin make machli hai, jiska shayad aapne naam suna ho, isko kehte hai locally foji khaga. Aur foji khaga jo hai, wo tani foji kiyo kehte hai, but khair foji khaga. It can grow really big, madha 40-50 kilo ka, aur mene dekha hai, wo fishermen yun agar pakad ke khada ho, to wo yahan se, it's like a, almost close to the size of the dolphin. So we, uh, with these trials, we saw that uh, Foji Khaga was getting trapped in the fishing nets. Our fishermen were very happy. Which means, as I told you, jitna catch jitna wazan zyada hai, catch ka utne paise zyada. So, so far fishermen are very happy with pingers and this is what we want. We want to keep them happy, we want to keep the dolphins happy and build that coexistence. Um, I don't know if but uh, I thought it would come, but the, we are also using, this is an equipment which is called F-Pods. Um, they record dolphins, so we can tell um, their graphs that the dolphins, when the fingers on, when they were out of the water, the dolphins were going You can see them visually, but we are trying to adopt a very, um, scientific approach and this these are small um, devices underwater that can record their um, wave wo waves jo apni acoustics se produce karti hain hum unko record kar sakte hain so it's all the why uh, you can move ahead we are uh, i'm just telling you all this that uh, conservation jo hai wo bhi ab uh, bahut uh, Advanced ho rahi hai. So, these saal se jo dolphins ko pakar pakar ke nikal rahe hain aur fishermen ko pakar rahe hain ke tumne yaan net kyun laga diya. It's better to bring some innovation and build coexistence and then monitor and have your results share with scientific community because I thought I should talk about all this because the science society, right? Um, so, we are also trying to, we have made standards uh, how will you know what's the best way to protect um, a protected area, how to manage it? So we have made um, specially designed river dolphin standards um, and now things are, everything is uh, digital, right? Everything is now smart. So you have an application on your phone, uh, like the rangers, the guards, and they know exactly through their phone uh, somebody can tell where they are, which are the problem areas for dolphins, where do you find more nets, you can have it all on your phone. So everything is now evolving and conservation is also evolving. Okay, that's the last bit, tracking. We put devices on dolphins to see where they go. Uh, this was a radio tag. So radio tag, this dolphin ka chota sa fin hota hai. Us pe ye, um, nahi laga hai tha. This is 2009. Uh, radio tags ka matlab hota hai ke aapke paas ek chota sa transmitter hota hai. Aur aap phir dolphin ko follow karte hai. Boat mein obviously swim karke nahi. Uh, and you can, uh, the, the radio will give you signals. Uh, so we tried this, it worked for uh, like about 3-4 weeks and uh, it was able to tell us uh, something very interesting which was that dolphins could pass through the gates of Sakhar Viraj because this was a rescued animal that we tagged 
और सखे पे राज के ऊपर छोड़ दिया एंड देन इट वेंट डाउन इट वेंट अप सर वो उससे पहले तक पूरी साइंटिफिक कम्युनिटी ये समझती थी कि डॉल्फिन्स आगे पीछे मूव नहीं कर सकती बेराज के गेट से सो दिस वाज अ ब्रेक थ्रू सो दैट्स व्हाई ट्रैकिंग एनिमल्स इज इम्पोर्टेंट टू नो वे दे गो एंड ट्रैकिंग इज डन फॉर नॉट जस्ट डॉल्फिन्स बट फॉर ऑल द एनिमल्स यू कैन पुट कॉलर्स लाइक पाकिस्तान में हमने कॉलर्स भी यूज़ किए हैं ऑन लेपर्ड्स टू ट्रैक देयर मूवमेंट सो यू नो देर समथिंग really interesting uh, happening in science uh, in wildlife but then we put a satellite tag which means that your animal you, you don't have to follow your animal but your animal is connected like your phone it's connected to satellites and it's telling you where you are aap sab shayad google maps use karte hain so it's something similar your phone is connected to satellite and giving you the location so this is what this was um and this was done last year in january the tag worked again this was the first river dolphin in asia that was tagged and gave results so it was a major achievement uh, बड़ी चीज थी कि दिस टैग टू वर्क एंड इट प्रोवाइडेड डेटा क्योंकि इसका दोस्तों फिल्म बहुत छोटा सा होता है एज अ सेट तो टैग बड़ी जल्दी से उतर सकता है बट वेन वी मेड द पंचर विद इंजेक्शन एंड एन एस थी सो नो पेन वॉज कॉज द टैग वॉज अटैच द जो उसका फिल्म था ड्रॉसल वो काफ़ी स्ट्रॉन्ग सा फिल्म है सो इट लास्टेड फोर मंथस और आपके ख्याल में एनी गैस कि डॉल्फिन इन फोर मंथ्स में कितने किलोमीटर दूर गई होगी एनी बडी वॉन्ट्स टू गैस सॉरी थाउजेंड आई विश वी डेंट है इट गुड गो अथाउजेंड नो नॉट थाउजेंड इट वेंट अबाउट फोर्टी एट किलोमीटर्स बट इट वेंट विद इन अ वीक इट वेंट अप Um, so इनकी होम रेंज होती है लाइक जैसे अब आपको कोई ट्रैक कर रहा है तो आपकी भी एक होम रेंज होगी जिसमें यू स्पेंड मोस्ट ऑफ योर टाइम सो दैट इज सेम विद एनिमल्स सो दे स्टे विद इन एन एरिया सो दे डॉल्फिन स्टे विद इन फोर्टी एट किलोमीटर्स विच इज Uh, something also new because a lot of scientists believe that in this dolphin zyada move nahi karti ye maine itni dafa suna hai um the indus dolphin to ji wahi rehti hai apne idhar aur apne group mein rehti hai aur bas idhar yahan jaati hai phir idhar you know that's how people aur ye mein unki uh, from fishermen to scientists bahut log is tarah kehte hain but we knew that oh it went 48 kilometers in the indus upstream which was uh, it was a news for us so uh, hum is tarah we are trying to understand it's important to understand this because then you can tell ke indus mein pani kitna aa raha hai aur uske sath uski movement kaise change ho rahi hai so jab humne release kiya to um ab thoda sa wo mujhe bhi pani ka itna flows ka because i'm not really a hydrologist but pani ka koi us waqt inlet thi 15000 cusex jisme pani ko measure karte hain jab humne chhoda dolphin ko aur within a week pani was rising very quickly and it went up to 25000 cusex so there was 10000 cusex increase but dolphin then really moved i mean so you can tell that correlation that it's you know you scientifically demonstrated you give us water dolphins will move that's what they need for their survival and it can help you in managing water through barrages taki hum make healthy habitat ko maintain kar sake so uh the last thing this is probably my last slide 
we are in partnership with a US-based foundation. Um, they specialize in medicine of uh, dolphins. So we, because sometimes we get dead dolphins, so we have built this collaboration that we will send samples pejenge, and you tell us how old the animal was. We still don't know how old, how long can they live. So very little is known. Um, so we, we can tell a lot by samples. We can tell how old they are. We can tell uh, their breeding status. We can tell, as I said, different um, you know, tox toxins in their body. So a lot of things uh, we can answer. And this is the collaboration that we have built now. This is a website. It's uh, riverdolphins.org or that we have established only for river dolphins. So it has all the information, interesting information on river dolphins um, globally. And you can look for Indus and then you will find only Indus. So with this, um, I'll end. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs>